Okay, good afternoon everyone. So how many of you are actually here for this session? How many of you are here because there's power and seating? Thank you for... Oh. If there were people standing up, I'd ask you to make way, but no, there's, there's plenty of room here. So my name's Mike O'Shea. I'm a Microsoft MVP for Windows, for devices, and IT. And this afternoon, I'll be running through Windows 10 management with Microsoft 365 Business. So first of all, what's Microsoft 365 Business? It takes components of Microsoft Intune, of Azure Active Directory, and combines them with the Office 365 Business Premium product. And I'll give you a breakdown in terms of what's included with the SKUs as we, as we go in in more detail. But I thought rather than spending a whole bunch of time going through all the introduction slides, et cetera, because it's only a 20 minute session, let's jump in and we'll go to the next slide, which is effectively just <laughs> jumping straight in so you can actually see a whole lot of this in action. So over on this machine, the first thing that I want to highlight here is one of the core parts of this when it comes to the Windows 10 management piece is leveraging the Windows 10 autopilot capabilities. So how many of you have already seen at one of the keynotes or one of the other sessions have seen the, uh, the autopilot capabilities in action? Yeah, so there's a, there's a few hands going up for that one. So in this case, all I need to do is sign in and I'll probably have to go through and uh, do this twice because it's been sitting here for a while waiting for me to sign in. So before I sign in, this is a new machine, so it's just coming out of the out-of-box experience, but you can see that it's already got company branding. I, I was creative enough to give it the Windows logo. I probably should have given it something a little bit more uh, identifiable as something that's not standard. But you can see here that it's telling me to enter my work email, and it's basically got some company branding, as well as some additional sign-in text down here as well. So I'll need to enter my password twice here because I've been sitting there for too long waiting to kick off. Now, once that happens, it will walk us through a few steps. Uh, the first step is going to be that it will ask me to start setting up for a PIN, but then as it does that, it will also ask me to go through and verify credentials. So what you start seeing here is think, capabilities like Azure multi-factor authentication kicking in pretty early. With the PIN capabilities, you can start seeing how we can leverage Windows Hello for Business, for example. So these are things that don't take too long, so I'll let that kick off and just run in the background for a moment. And while that's happening, I'll jump across to a machine where I've actually run through this process, just so I can walk you through a few of the things that you should expect, and you'll see this on the other machine as well. So first of all, we've got this magical thing called Windows 10 Business. Who has never heard of Windows 10 Business before? I'm, ho I'm hoping that's the response, <laughs> yeah. So this is not a new SKU. This is just Windows 10 Pro being managed through this environment. So if you look at any price lists and you look for a Windows 10 business, you won't find anything because it's Pro. But in this case, it's Pro being managed through uh, Microsoft 365 business. So that's important to see. Now, as that's happened, let's jump back over to here. We'll set a pin up. And good old MFA. And as that goes through that initial setup process, there'll be a few things that will uh, will be obvious pretty much straight away. So the first thing you'll see is that we've got a customized desktop background. So this is because one of the Azure AD inclusions in here is the enterprise state roaming capability that normally you'd need to get as your Active Directory Premium. So in this case, you get this just, it's just available as part of the SKU. So things like your browser settings, passwords, etc., whatever it is that you want to synchronize between multiple devices, we can start doing through here. And you can sort of rest assured knowing that it's, it's stored safely back in back-end encrypted storage inside of Azure. Now, other things that are going on behind the scenes in this VM, and just so you can see what's happening here, hopefully we, I've given it enough time. We're on the the network for the event here. So some of this stuff can take a little bit longer than what we'd, we'd normally see. 
But what I'm looking for, okay, we've got to be a little bit more patient, but what will happen within a short time period is we'll see Microsoft uh, Office will start getting pushed down to this. And this is, this is doing a regular Office click to run installation, but purely through MDM. Now, this was, these were some special CSPs that were added into uh, Windows 10 so that it could actually pull this down uh, because with Windows 10, even though you can do application installs via MDM, they have to be packaged as an MSI. But for the, just because of how critical it is to make sure that Office gets deployed, this is something that we can actually go through and just have um, Office deployed via MDM. So here we can see some of the components such as the OMA DM client, which is effectively the, the Windows 10 MDM capabilities. Now that's, yeah, that's gonna take a little while to kick in, but you can already see, see some of the customizations. So while that's running, let me just jump back quickly across to this machine. We've got Excel sitting here. Let's fire Excel up, just so I can show you the version of Office that we've got. And surprise, surprise, at some point recently, a very new version of Excel was, in, it was installed. Now, because we've, we, when we go through and sign in here, we're automatically signing, we, like, we're basically getting issued a token because we're signing in directly against Azure Active Directory. So the first time I open up Office, well, you yeah, know, Office goes through and says, oh, I recognize who you are. It automatically logs me in and it also automatically activates for me. But anyone who's already using Office 365 Pro Plus, how many of you are using Office 365 Pro Plus today? So you're kind of used to, this, to some of this kind of thing already. But just what I want to highlight here for those of you who you know, are probably living in the E3 or the E5 worlds when it comes to Office, is what you'll see here is that this is Microsoft Office 365 business. But it's still click to run, it's still based on that same installation, uh, in the same installation files as Pro Plus. It's just really the user details that determine what it is that gets exposed for you. So I'll show you in just a moment how we actually go through and configure all of these so that we can get them deployed. So let's just quickly minimize that one. Let's jump back to that other VM and see if we've got any Office installation pieces happening just yet. Ah, oh, here we go. That's what I was looking for. Microsoft Office click to run. So that's installing in the background. Let's see if it's having much of a, no, we're not getting a lot of network activity from it yet. Um, but hopefully uh, we can get to the point where we can actually, oh, sorry, it's actually already installed. I was not expecting that. Uh, the benefit of being hooked up to a wired connection versus using the Wi-Fi that everyone else in here is, is using. So that's actually pretty good because what this means is that now if I click on Excel and we do that same thing, what you'll see here is that we have to go through um, and it's saying, okay, it's already sort of figured out who I am. If I go to the blank workbook so I can go back to the account settings, Okay, so you can see here that I haven't run, the, haven't run this one previously, but as I mentioned, it's already gone through, it's already um, done this. Now, because the wide connection here is actually really quick, we weren't able to watch one of the things that we'd normally see at this stage, which is normally this would sit there and be unactivated and giving me a message that in 30 days, it's going to go into low functionality mode um, until it can connect, connect back in and go, ah, oh, you have a license. But because it does it so quickly on this, in this scenario, Sorry, I couldn't show you a non-licensed product. I had to show you a licensed product instead. So that's a, that's a good demonstration not to actually have to show. So let's now jump in behind the scenes and take a look at what's required in the portal to get these pieces working. No. How many of you have used the Office 365 Admin Center? Does this look familiar? <laughs> but does it also have a few differences? So the differences, you'll see I've pulled the differences up to the top. So first up, the Microsoft 365 Business Preview. So this is a preview product uh, going, you know, we should get some an announcements pretty soon around when it goes live. But like Office 365, it's got the ability to walk us through and set things up. But what I've pulled towards the top here are some of the differences that we get here because we're pulling in some additional Azure AD and uh, Microsoft Intune capabilities. So for the device actions, remove company data and factory reset, that's leveraging Intune capability. If we take a look at managing office deployment, 
how many options do you normally have when it comes to deploying Office through Click to Run? How many of you have jumped into the, uh, the XML, the configuration XML files and had to do customizations or through group policy? Your option here is, do you want to install it, uninstall it, and who do you want, that to, who do you want it to go to? This is all about simplicity. So the question that always gets asked is, but what if I want to jump in behind the scenes? Don't worry, we'll get to that. That's why I've got the other tabs open up here. Uh, we've got a few minutes to get to those. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Now with device policies, how many of you are using Microsoft Intune today? No one. Oh, so everything I'm going to tell you is brand new for you. So that, that's great. So instead of looking at the ones I've got included in here, let's go through and create a new device policy. What you'll see here is that we've got Android and iOS. This session is focused on the Windows 10 side, but I'll cover these uh, very quickly. What you'll see here is that these are just application management policies. So the, this is all about MAM slash MDM when it comes to iOS and Android. The assumption with this product is that it's really a BYOD type approach where users are bringing in their own devices. So as the organization, you don't want to manage the device. You just want to control what's going on with the data within the apps that you care about based on that user's profile. So getting that deeper control over the Office mobile apps and being able to control corporate data is something that we're doing here very, very simply for Android and iOS. But when it comes to Windows 10, you can see that we've got the application management using Windows information protection, but we can also do the full Windows 10 MDM capability uh, as well. But just to sort of show you, again, when you think about MDM, you're normally thinking about hundreds, hopefully not thousands of different settings. Um, but in this case, we can just go through and set up a few, a few options here. But what happens with some of these is behind the scenes, it's actually going through and setting up multiple policies. So what's a simple uh, on off switch here, maybe setting up you know, a, a handful of different settings for each of those. And we'll jump in and take a look at those in just a moment. But if we just do a quick comparison of the, of when we get to the application management, You'll see here that they also do slight variations, whether it's a personal device or a company-owned device for, the, for Windows 10. So giving you different ways of working with the apps, with the devices, etc. Now we'll just go back here and we'll quickly talk about the Windows 10 upgrade. So this is a Windows 10 Pro upgrade for people who've got Windows 7 Pro or Windows 8.1 Pro who didn't take advantage of that free upgrade offer. And like, how many of you are familiar with the, the Windows 10 E3 or E5 licensing? How you get that, the five licenses. So it's a user-based subscription as opposed to a device-based subscription. This is the same. So that user could upgrade five of their devices to Windows 10 Pro. What you can upgrade it from is only Windows 7 Pro and Windows 8 Pro and Windows 8.1 Pro. You can't upgrade from Windows XP regardless of what version. You can't upgrade from Windows 10 Home you can't upgrade from Windows 10S. So I know that's probably not too, too much of a con concern for too many people just yet. So just remember that it, it's a way for people who set out that free upgrade because they may have had, uh, had some app compat issues, et cetera, that they wanted to get under control before that. Now the final thing that we'll do in here before we, we switch out is I just want to show you, actually I'll do it over in this one first. So I could have just switched and you may not, may not have even noticed. Don't worry, there's no trickery going on here. All I want to do to begin with is show you a clean environment where if we take a look at this user and we take a look at the product licenses, the only license that I've got in here is the Microsoft 365 business license. So and I've, got, I've got 300 of them. So if anyone wants one, I've got 299 to go. Um, I'll be your hoster until this trial runs out, I think in February and then I'll hold your data ransom. Is that, a, is that okay? Um, so if we take a look here, some of the important things, there's a lot of Office 365 stuff because it's, Microsoft, it's Office 365 business. But as we go through, you'll see Intune is here. We'll see that, that Windows business, so important things to note here is, is that Windows 10 activation after your upgrade, it's doing a digital license and looking at your requirements under Azure Active or your allowance under Azure Active Directory. But what I really want to focus on with this one is right here, Azure Active Directory. So notice it's not saying Azure Active Directory Premium. So this offers you some of the Azure Active Directory Premium features, but not all of them. So just be a little bit careful with that. Um, don't assume 
that just because you've done it with um, Azure AD P1, for example, that, that this is going to do it. And I'll talk about those in, in just a moment so you get, you've got an idea. So let's close this one out. And I just want to jump into the, actually, might as well just do this directly from here. If I go down to admin centers and we fire up the Azure AD portal link here, what you'll see here is that it's effectively telling me right now that it's the Azure AD for Office 365. So I'd, I'd expect to see that cleaned up to Microsoft 365 so that we get a bit more of an idea. But here it's basically telling us we do not have Azure Active Directory Premium, otherwise it wouldn't be offering us the trial. And also down here, like if you are using Azure Active Directory Premium, you're probably looking at this user sign-in thing wondering why it's blacked out because this is what happens when you don't have Azure Active Directory Premium. You don't get all those advanced security reports. So if you are, how many of you are familiar with the Azure AD portal? Are you used to things being blacked out? <laughs> no. So, so here, look, here's something else that's blacked out. If we go to groups, actually let's go through to enterprise apps. We've got more things blacked out because we don't have the, the rights for those. So just to make sure I'm getting this right for now, and this is something that is subject to change prior to the product being launched, what we do get as part of the Azure AD component, uh, we get support for autopilot, we get support for greater than 10 SaaS apps through the MyApps portal, which is really important because we get about 19 <laughs> based on what's included with Office 365. Uh, we get the MDM auto-enroll capabilities of Azure Active Directory Premium. Uh, we get enterprise state roaming, so things like the desktop following you around, et cetera, as we just saw. Uh, we get self-service password reset. We get um, single sign-on. Um, sorry, we get, uh, sorry, what's, yeah, single sign-on as well as some of the other uh, self-service uh, options around groups and apps, et cetera, that we'd normally see. So let's jump back across to that other tenant just very quickly so I can show you what's going on here. So if I go to the admin center for this one and we go into Azure AD, in this case things aren't blanked out because I've got a mix of different Azure AD offering. I've got AAD P1, P2, Basic, uh, etc. So I actually do see everything lighting up in here. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that if you saw this that you weren't thinking that this was what would happen by default. But from here we can go through and if we want to take a look at what's going on behind the scenes with Intune, for example. So if I want to take a look at what's going on with the, the different Intune uh, device policies, it's really easy for me to go through and, and take a look at that. So if we take a look at the you know, device configuration policies, you know, this is the you know, Intune in the Azure portal. So it makes it really easy for us to go in behind the scenes and see what's there. So I've just been given the, the wind up <laughs> message. I think a few of you, you may have seen the less than subtle hand gesture. Uh, which normally, normally you wouldn't laugh at something like that. But this just gives you an idea of you know, behind the scenes, you still have access to what you'd expect to be able to see. Uh, but just be careful because from a licensing perspective, it is different to what you may have already had exposure to. So, uh, so it's worth uh, taking a look at it. But, I'll cut off now, and if you've got any questions, come up, and I'll make room so that the next presenter can come up here and get set up. So thank you very much for your time, and yeah, come up and ask any questions if you've got them.